This is an Amiga 2000 motherboard um, revision 6. It is basically complete, uh, but it is battery damaged and it does not work. Um, the Agnes socket here is gone. This has been re-socketed, so is this, but it's plain through here, the, the green colour um, stretches from here right across over through into here there, there's green in this uh, processor accelerator slot there's um, some on the keyboard connector when the battery that was here um, leaked the damage was very significant I, I purchased this board along with another one many years ago on eBay as complete battery damaged can't fix some motherboards. I think I paid less than a hundred dollars for both of them at the time and I knew that would be a great source of spare parts but I never anticipated I never anticipated this this is a brand new motherboard um, this motherboard is a replica of the revision 6.2 um, I believe. Yep. It's still wrapped in, in uh, glad wrap. And this was done by some folk on the interwebs. <laughs> I don't have any real connection to them um, other than to say thanks. Who took advantage of, of modern um, printed circuit board ordering facilities like, I don't know, PCBWay or whatever. I have no affiliation with any of them. I've, I've never bought anything from any of them directly myself. But I took advantage of those sorts of services and modern um, software for designing printed circuit boards and made a replica. Um, right down to the, the logo over here, the, the only real differences between this board and its equivalent original is a little note over here that says that it um, is the Amiga 2000 Remake Revision 1.85. <clears throat> I think this don't throw it in the rubbish bin symbol is new and it's designed to take a coin cell battery and I do not believe that it is uh, configured to try and charge that battery either. <clears throat> I mean it's possible to replace the old batteries with a coin cell but steps need to be taken to prevent the motherboard from trying to charge the cell. So, what makes me think, a hobbyist, that I can turn this into a working 2000 motherboard? And, and the answer is that armed with reasonable soldering skills, basic electronics knowledge around how to identify components and which components need to go in which way and so on. This is an exercise in advanced Meccano, um, unless something goes wrong. Troubleshooting is an entirely different proposition. But um, the, um, the, the, the current state of <coughs> Amiga Diagnostic and uh, Repair um, information on the web is fantastic, um, including a kickstart ROM here which is solely for the purposes of diagnosing the board and the, the author I believe of that ROM and um, a uh, Amiga rebuilder and designer of, of, of um, Renowned has actually published a full guide on how to get one of these up and running and to essentially test as you go um, and that's um, John quote Chucky quote Hertel and his website is an amazing resource and it's one I will be relying on heavily. I've just now printed out his multi-step guide to assembling one of these so that I can have it on hand as I go. I do have a, a 4K monitor off to my left here that I can sort of swing around a little bit but there's nothing quite like pieces of paper for someone in there in their 40s. <laughs> so, for this board, I need to bring across the MOS custom chips from the Amiga, the Agnes, and some 
CIAs and Paula and Buster and or maybe they're the CIAs and Gary, I, I don't remember exactly. There is a um, digital to analog converter for the video circuitry that's got to go in there, which is fairly custom but is replicable, unlike the other chips. And everything else, pretty much, is stuff that can still be purchased except for the DB23 connectors on the back, the male and the female. They can be purchased new from Europe, uh, but I'm thinking I will try and salvage some from an Amiga 500 parts board I have. And and it's, it's never ha spent any time near the coast and the connectors on it appear to be as new. So that's, that's my plan for that. What I do have here though is an awful lot of soldering. I, I bought this board from Spain of all places along with some other stuff and um, I bought the best one I could find um, and I'm trying to figure out how I can make it as essentially as good as it can be because with the amount of time I'm going to put into it an extra 10 or 20 dollars for components probably doesn't matter all that much I'm actually going to buy jumpers for the for the pin headers on here at about 60 cents each because I'm sick of cheap ones uh, losing their um, their grip on the pins. I've actually had a jumper on the right pins in the past and, and had had it not make the connection because it was it was too sloppy. Oh, oh look there's a a little floppy disk symbol from floppy mm, 209 um, who was who was involved in, in I suppose reverse engineering this. And, and sorry, I was talking about the board. This is this is all all of the um, all of the exposed uh, copper, I suppose, would have been tin normally. Is is gold plated? I I, I I ponied up for one that was gold plated. Should make soldering a breeze. I've also bought some um, some flux, which uh, some sorry some water wash up flux solder which is also 42% tin, no, 42% lead and, no, no, hang on, 62% tin, 38% lead, which is not the usual 60-40 blend, but which should be properly eutectic, that is to say it should have but one melting point. Um, and, and the water wash up should mean that I can take the board, once all the passives and sockets are installed, and get some distilled water and get it thoroughly clean without needing special cleaners or tools. Although it doesn't smell very good. I'll have to be extra careful to um, deal with the smoke from soldering, not just from a, a health perspective, but because it also smells a bit ick. So getting all of the components in one place to build one of these is a lot of work in itself. And a UK seller um, sells these pre-assembled and <laughs> with hindsight, maybe I should have gone with that. Um, there's a lot of soldering here, but the chance to build it from scratch is is, is exciting, and and I have this this enormous bag of components, um, sockets and um, more sockets and other sockets, and uh, this is an additional capacitor pack, um, and and all of the the slots for through here and over there, and um, other misc from other time I, I, RAM chips. Um, the 74 something 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 chips that switch things about the place and so on. I'm, I'm not really across the uh, exact detail of how it works on a on a chip by chip basis. Um, I know what the different chips broadly do, but um, that's probably where it ends for me. So I'll build this up as a classic Amiga 2006.2. One megabyte of chip RAM, which I've always found to be enough. And I will um, put it into a case in the place of a board which is in poor condition. And I will probably then have an Amiga 2000 sale once, once, I, once I figure out which bits I don't need anymore. Um, at the moment I have a, a, a few um, in, in uh, storage so that I can do this and not run out of parts but um, 
I think in the end I may even be able to package up a set of custom chips on top of everything else either for my own use as spares or, or for uh, or for sale too but it should be a great Amiga 2000 I have probably to put in it a 68030 card um, I'm hoping to get my hands on a Golden Gate 2 Plus to enable these ISA sockets just because it would be cool though they only work if there's a bridge board or some sort of adapter board through there I have an AMAX board which has got all the Apple ROMs on it and allows for emulation of um, a Mac I have an Ethernet card for it um, I may put in a separate IDE card although I have an Ethernet header on uh, an IDE header on the Ethernet card which has limited capacity but be enough to get the job done um, and that oh, and, a, and, a, and a SCSI card as well as a hard drive controller which will make it pretty full um, which is kind of how I wanted I, I, I don't there's, there's there are a bunch of reasons to have an Amiga 2000 but fundamentally the, the, the real difference between this board and an Amiga 500 is the expansion slots um, I mean, I, I had one of these when I was growing up, and so I have a, 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 um, a sense of nostalgia about them, but um, the Amiga 500 is missing this Buster chip here, and Buster's job is to keep all of these in check. Um, there's no CPU slot in a 500, but that's hardly an impediment. Um, it, it's really... the CPU socket can, can be used um, in lieu of it, but instead of it. Um, and there are plenty of accelerators for a 500 that go in there. But on the 500, it's over here. So we'll see how I go with this. I've got this fellow here for um, getting my component leads right. I'm trying to figure out what I want to do with um, sockets that have turned holes in them as against sockets that are um, more conventional and have uh, double wipes on them. There are pros and cons of both. Um, I'll put Kickstart 3.2.2 on it, um, but I'm, I'm pretty confident that I can do it because, like I say, with basic soldering skills and and uh, endless attention to detail and a sort of a test as you go assembly guide, it it really is advanced Meccano, and by taking all of the uh, integrated circuits and putting them in sockets um, the absolute worst case is I can fire the parts cannon at it and just start replacing things till it works but I shouldn't have to do that I, I should be able to be far far more targeted than that I also still have to make a few preliminary checks just paranoia checks just to make sure for example this is where the uh, motherboard power connector goes I just need to make sure that the ground pins aren't shorted to the power pins and, and so on. Um, I mean, I believe this has been a sound. It was sold to me as, as having been properly tested um, after manufacturer, uh, after manufacture, but um, I, I will be the judge of what is reasonable um, and, and will test it myself. It was a beautiful thing. It's quite... Uh, <laughs> I don't, maybe I should go and get some verniers and take a measure on this and just see. Stand by, I'll go and get some verniers. Oh, sorry, sorry. One moment, please. Although, there won't be a cut because, well, you know, my videography skills are, are, uh, you know. All right. Digital vernier calipers because I'm soft. I do have some ones where you actually have to read the vernier scale, but but I'm not using those today. So I'm going to measure the thickness of the glad wrap at the same time. We'll zero that. We'll test for repeatability. Yeah, it's within a hundredth of a millimeter. 1.75, and this original here, 1.75. 6.9 it's probably just the glad wrap so full thickness um, but gold plated and and 
and just beautifully manufactured. I mean, modern printed circuit boards, and you can see where someone's tried to bodge this one and fix it up with speaker cable. I'd like to think that wasn't me, but I was out of the vintage computer game for so long that I can hardly remember that I can hardly remember what I did do and what I didn't do. Which is part of the reason I want to get this project up and running because I'm really in the thick of it at the moment. Um, but yeah, you can see how many battery damage has come through to the bottom. Yeah, you can see this this shadow over here. Look at that. That's a shadow. That that's that's discoloration from 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 battery damage from that leaking battery there. Oh, I should have my ESD strap on. From leaking battery over there, it, it, you can see it comes right across, right across, right through there, right through there, uh, right through here. You can see in in there. There's little sort of corrosion spots. In there, there are corrosion spots. And there there are corrosion spots these traces here are shot well damaged discolored these ones here are similarly discolored it's they break your heart the number of vintage computers which are essentially scrapped because of leaking rechargeable clock batteries I tell you, I mean, they, if they fitted them with a time bomb, it couldn't have been more effective. Um, it really couldn't have been. But this one will never have that problem. These lithium ion, lithium, sorry, um, maybe lithium ion, I guess they must be. Lithium coin cells like a CR2032, your bog standard coin cell, they really do tend not to leak. And even if they do, they don't have the same destructive power or possibly even the same internal volume to, to leak as much. Um, but I, I've, I've never known one to leak, so, and I'll only use the best ones. In fact, for, um, for remote controls of all kinds that I might value, I mean, this, this, this one here is my laser disc player, I, I only use, I exclusively use, um, lithium uh, double and triple A's these ones are energizer ultimates and, and they're guaranteed not to leak and they in my experience don't they're horrendously expensive but then again they last indefinitely as well the shelf life of them is often in the vicinity of 20 years um, wonderful stuff anyway I digress this is the beginnings of this project I'm sort of sorting through what I have in the way of other sockets and, and I've needed a, a box of ice sockets for, for a very long time so finally I'll sorry about the banging so finally I'll, I'll have those and um, I need to just pick up this guide and see see what's uh, what's the order of operations um, I see what's the order of operations in um, in John Hertel's guide because that's how I'm going to do it. I reckon um, not doing it that way would be um, well. There's just no good reason not to do it that way. And as much as I might like to start by soldering in sockets because they're easy and they look good and they give a sense of satisfaction. Uh, it looks like I need to put in all the passives, save for the electrolytic capacitors because they're quite tall. And that's what I will do first. Um, pity the fool that doesn't know how to take good advice when it's offered to them. <laughs>